tonight on the night team. U.S. and Israeli officials have been bracing for an attack from Iran as soon as this weekend. How the White House is now responding. Plus, a lawsuit has been filed that's accusing the former University of Kentucky swim coach of allowing sexual violence. Who filed the lawsuit? And JCPS is still working to ease a bus driver shortage in the district as students plan to find new ways to school next semester. We've seen a good number. We've got a good flow going, so we've been able to support everyone who's come. The hiring blitz to fill routes. And later, Derby festivities are underway. Just three weeks out from Derby 150, and Kentuckiana is wasting no time celebrating. Oh, it, it means a lot. You know, you're talking about the kickoff to the Kentucky Derby. We're taking you to the Derby Festival block party and the Phillies Derby Ball as the countdown continues to the big day. The WHAS 11 night team starts right now. Israel's defense ministry says several Iranian-backed drone strikes made it through aerial defense and have struck Israeli territory. The drone strikes are now escalating tension worldwide. It's our top story here on The Night Team. I'm Alex Dieterer. President Joe Biden has been in the Situation Room all night in meetings with his national security team. ABC has the latest from Israel. In the middle of the night, drones streaked across the sky over the Holy Land. Israel's military defense is in overdrive to respond to an unprecedented attack by Iran, which the IDF says launched more than 200 drones from inside Iran, as well as from proxies in Iraq, Syria, and southern Lebanon. A U.S. official tells ABC News the targets were military bases, including one that housed F-35 fighter jets. ABC's Britt Klenet described what she saw. About an hour ago, we were seeing trails of orange, these orange flashes in the sky, and then the thud of Israel's air defense in action. It, it almost sounded like thunder. Uh, there was at least a dozen projectiles in all directions behind me. After the drones launched, Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei said the evil regime will be punished. President Biden cut short his weekend trip to Delaware, returning to the White House Saturday afternoon to huddle with his national security team. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the country's vaunted Iron Dome missile defense system was ready for the onslaught. We are prepared for any scenario, he added, both in defense and attack. Whoever hurts us, he vowed, we hurt him. According to a U.S. official, American forces shot down some of the Iranian drones headed toward Israel. The U.S. military was already increasing its presence in the Middle East, adding troops, ships, and aircraft to protect assets already in the region. At the United Nations, Iran said the U.S. must stay away, claiming its attack on Israel was conducted as a legitimate defense in response to Israel's attack on the Iranian embassy in Syria earlier this month. Even though no Israeli citizens appear to have been killed in this attack, a source tells ABC News U.S. officials believe Israel will be forced to respond to Iran and that Iran would be the target of that response, meaning yet another escalation in a region already thick with tension. Josh Oniger, ABC News, Jerusalem. Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell released a statement tonight following Iran's strikes, saying in part, quote, the United States must stand with our ally as it defends its people and its sovereignty. President Biden says America's commitment to Israel is ironclad. It's time to match words with action, end quote. Meanwhile, police in Sydney, Australia, say six people were killed when a man went on a stabbing spree at a busy shopping center. Eight other people were injured, including a nine-month-old baby, before the suspect was shot by police. I saw um, people running like quite clearly in one direction, and behind them um, was a man with a knife running towards different people. He was running up to them or, um, you know, trying to... I, I don't know what he was doing. I was hiding in the back room, and I was just hearing gunshots. <laughs> it's just like the worst thing ever. She didn't shoot him. Well... Uh, he would have kept going. He was on the rampage. He was on the bloody rampage. In Australia have not yet identified the officer who shot and killed the suspect. However, they say she was alone when she confronted the attacker. Authorities say the attack is not thought to be terror-related. 
Here at home, two former University of Kentucky swimmers are now suing the former swim coach, the university and athletic director Mitch Barnhart. They're accusing swim coach Lars Jorgensen of sexual assault and claiming that the university ignored warnings about his alleged inappropriate behavior. The lawsuit states that Jorgensen forcibly raped former Kentucky swimmer Briggs Alexander and attempted to have sex with another unnamed assistant coach. According to the lawsuit, multiple other coaches at Kentucky witnessed Jorgensen groping swimmers or his assistants during his decade with the program. And at one point, a coach reported his alleged behavior to the university's Title IX office. Jay Blanton, a university spokesperson, said the school takes any allegations of misconduct, quote, very seriously, but does not discuss specific personnel issues. As JCPS parents and students grapple with the new transportation plan for next year, the district is now looking to fix the issue they say caused the move, a nationwide bus driver shortage. In an effort to ease the shortage, the district today hosted a hiring blitz. Next year, JCPS will no longer provide transportation to most magnet and traditional schools, effectively cutting down the number of routes needed to transport students. Even with less routes, the district is still facing a massive shortage of drivers, something that's not lost on organizers of today's blitz. We really don't have a limit. Um, as everyone is aware, we've experienced the shortage for over a decade and so we would love as many drivers as possible to come on board. Any large amount is going to make a huge difference. Um, if we could hire a hundred drivers that would be awesome but again we're welcoming any and everyone who is willing to take on that task. If you're interested in becoming a bus driver you can head to our website whas11.com for a link on how to apply. Meanwhile, parents and students are looking ahead to next semester, trying to make plans on how they'll get to school on time. Under the new transportation plan, the only magnet schools that will still provide transportation are Central and Western high schools. And for parents and students, this new plan has signaled worry. We've built bonds with people for so long, all the way from when you started as a freshman or even some people in middle school, and you're just trying to finish out your schooling, and for that to get taken away from you right before you're about to have another big change is really hard. The school board decision comes in the wake of an audit from the company Prismatic, which found, quote, JCPS leadership did not seem to have adequately weighed the time needed to implement such sweeping changes at the start of last school year. A person is in the hospital tonight after a car burst into flames following a crash on Bishop Lane earlier this evening. Fern Creek Fire says they, along with the Oklahoma Fire, responded to a car versus a building crash on Bishop Lane just off Jennings Lane near the railroad tracks. Fire officials say when they arrived, the car was completely engulfed in flames. You can see that right here. The fire was spreading to the building it had crashed into. Firefighters were able to bring the fire under control within minutes of arrival. The driver of the car was taken to the hospital where their condition is unknown at this time. Fire officials say the accident caused a delay to Norfolk's Southern Railroad due to damage to crossing equipment and firefights crossing the tracks with water supply lines. The cause of the accident is still under investigation by LMPD. Change Today, Change Tomorrow hosted a summit today to promote equitable access to healthy food options in Louisville's black community. According to the USDA, nearly 9 million black people in the U.S. could not access enough food to lead a healthy, active life in 2022. Today's summit brought community leaders, activists, and food industry workers together with the community so they could discuss how they can work together to provide healthy and affordable foods. We created this event based off the Hunger in Kentucky Summit. We realized the, the event was missing something, and it was black people with the actual lived experience of navigating food scarcity. Today they had 100 people attend, and organizers are hoping they can do follow-up work with those to continue to promote healthy lifestyles. Today, Officer Nick Wilt was honored at the Louisville Cardinals baseball game, a year after he was shot while responding to the mass shooting at Old National Bank. Today, Wilt was honored as part of Heroes Weekend at Jim Patterson Stadium. This week marked one year since a gunman opened fire at the bank, killing five people. Wilt also met with Mayor Craig Greenberg today. Greenberg called him a prime example of the sacrifices our first responders and their families make daily to protect Louisville. 
Well, it is almost hard to believe, but we are just three weeks away from the 150th run for the Roses. As the countdown to Derby 150 starts, so do all of the fun Derby festivities. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Aspen Hester joined hundreds of people today, kicking off Derby season this year during a whole host of events. Kentucky Derby Festival official block party. As the Derby festivities kick off this weekend. Derby season is a whirlwind. We do quite a few events. We have people traveling from across the country to visit. A whole host of events are spotlighting Louisville. It is indeed a spectacle, but however, it's the greatest spectacle because we're talking about people from all over the world coming here. And you're talking about the, the, the greatest two-minute horse race in the whole wide world. Over at the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Complex, a chance for small black owned businesses to shine. The importance of keeping black businesses open is making sure that it sustains at least for a year. What that takes is to make sure that we put them in proper places, to make sure that they have opportunities to build the right relationships so that people can pour back into our businesses. In the first event on the road to the Derby, hundreds gathered for a blog part focused on growing and sustaining black business and bringing health care to underserved communities. Uh, we got a job fair going on as well as a lot of our community partners are here in this one place. For some of the dozens of vendors, booths shut down early because customers sold out business. They've been very important and instrumental in uh, opening opportunities and avenues for us to get our names out there. And just down the road inside the Gold House Hotel. <laughs> You'll find the ball that starts it all. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for all of us to engage you know, in the process. Tonight, just a good time. Meet a few friends and have some nice dinner. I don't think I'll dance tonight, but you know, I'll enjoy the party. Hundreds packed inside the ballroom for the 66th annual Phillies Derby Ball. During the biggest night of the Kentucky Derby Festival Foundation's charitable arm, the organization crowned KDF's queen and a royal court. I'm a New Orleans native, and it reminds me of, okay. of Mardi Gras because you have all these events and activities that yeah. lead up to the Kentucky Derby. So just a wonderful and amazing time. As Louisville prepares for a springtime spectacle next week with Thunder, hundreds, if not thousands, are already celebrating as Derby season is officially underway. In Louisville, Connor Steff in the WHAS 1119 on your side. Counting down the days for a list of all the Derby celebrations about to get underway in the next few weeks, you can head to our website, whas11.com.